Hey folks and welcome back to another mind map walkthrough. This time we're going to go through that incredibly popular language called Python. So essentially uh, Python is of course being seen on a lot of uh, job requests on CVs uh, and so this is something we really need to be very very aware of. What is Python? Of course it's a very powerful programming language, very versatile. It's, it's known for its flexibility and versatility so that, that's huge for you to understand. Um, the language itself is very simple in terms of the way you learn it, so it's very popular with programmers who want to learn programming, but that belies this um, fact that actually Python is very powerful as well. So although you'll see uh, Python being the language that they use to teach programming in college and universities, um, they will actually uh, use Python in a much more powerful way once they've uh, graduated, gone into a job. So Python syntax is designed to be easy to learn, but actually uh, the syntax is also strong enough to be used in everything from web development right through to um, artificial intelligence. So that's one of the great strengths of Python. It's open source, of course, so it's got this huge community that was co is constantly evolving Python. That, that's major. So basically it's not a static language, it's evolving constantly and there are uh, people who are just adding more and more to it all the time. So that's why people love Python. But let's go into this in a bit more detail. So I'm not going to go mad about the, um, the syntax level understanding for you. Um, you don't really need to go there, but you know these are the core concepts that when they go for a tech um, interview, they will actually be asked about things like this. You and I, as tech recruiters, we won't necessarily be needing to understand anything uh, at this level. And I might um, touch again on what they cover in a tech interview on the next uh, mind map in a minute. But what you really need to be completely familiar with is that when you go into a conversation with someone who's a Python developer, make sure you understand what the frameworks and libraries actually all do. So things like Django, Flask, uh, Pyramid, these are web development uh, environments. So a candidate who is uh, showing you that they've got experience of this is primarily going to be uh, in the web development side of things with Python. Um, however, if a client gives you uh, a request for a Python developer uh, with NumPy, Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow. Oh, this is the beautiful data science side of things. So they're much more into the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, the data science side of things. Um, and, and that is hugely sought after at the moment. So make sure that you are understanding that the beauty of Python for you as a technical recruiter is that you need to understand the context in which Python is being used in. So one client might ask for Python, it would have nothing to do with data science. Whereas another uh, client may ask for Python and it would be nothing to do with web development. So it's very important for you to understand the context in which Python is being used. And how do you understand that? Well, when the client gives you a job spec, look at the libraries and frameworks that they're giving you. And those libraries and frameworks are a surefire giveaway as to what environment Python is being used in. So you can use it in data science, in artificial intelligence, in machine learning, but you can also use it as an automation tool. So essentially, uh, Python uh, can be used in a systems administration environment, in a DevOps environment. You'll notice that Selenium is, of course, a testing tool, but uh, Scrapey, Beautiful Soup, you know, the, these again will allow Python to create automated scripts within a administration environment. You can even use Python just for uh, GUI development. And of course, if you've got Python at the back end, you might use PyQt at the front end to, to create the, the GUI for that. It even does game development. So essentially, when you use, when you've got Pygame, you know that that Python developer is purely focused on a gaming environment uh, situation. So though that's a huge one for you to understand as a tech recruiter. Uh, you need to understand which frameworks are being used. You will come across uh, tools as well. So um, again, don't get too hung up on this, but when you see things like Jupyter Notebook or Atom in a Python, Python context, it's primarily as a text editor. They're, that's how they actually put the text into the program. They have uh, package managers as well to roll out Python. Uh, and there are uh, virtual environments like Conda that you can use Python in. So they've got their own testing tools as well, like PyTest, uh, unit test, 
and these are pr PyTest pretty much Python specific, but they can use other testing tools like all developers as well. So again, you're not gonna be worried too much about the, the heavier programming side of things as to how they use uh, Python in a best, best practices way. But again, these are the sorts of things that a client will ask these people. So let's go on to um, a bit more about how to interview a Python developer, shall we? Uh, and this is the next mind map in the category. Of course, you'll find all the links. And of course, once again, I'm going through this. I won't necessarily do a walkthrough of all the backend development languages, but uh, some of the key ones. But remember, you will have access to the full library um, if you're on the platform. Uh, the full library of uh, mind maps for backend languages. So no reason to worry there. Um, but uh, here are the sort of things that a client will ask your Python developers. So essentially, they're going to be asking about, you know, core programming concepts and things like that. Now, if you don't understand the uh, answer coming back, there's no real reason for you to, to actually um, ask these questions because uh, you're going to look silly if you don't understand the answer but these are the sorts of things that the client will ask them in terms of web development they'll ask which language uh, which frameworks have they used uh, they might ask them about things like decorators generators but again you don't need to worry about those what is far more important for you of course is to ask about things like their past experiences. Now, uh, here it's of course always good practice to kind of make sure that you understand can you describe a project where you use certain um, Python frameworks? So, where did you use Django, whatever? If you see any of these on uh, the, the CV, ask them to explain uh, where they've used them and they will uh, hopefully uh, extol the virtues of how, how uh, they've used part Python in the past. So uh, things like uh, languages, frameworks, but also things like how have they got involved in um, using Git and uh, how have they used version control systems like Git uh, in a team environment. So that would tell you the nature of the projects. If they've been involved in large projects, they'll definitely use version control systems like Git because that is where Python goes into the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lines of code and you will need that to give you an idea of the scale of the, the Python projects they've been uh, experienced in. Um, finally, we're just gonna cover the scenario-based questions. So if you see, as I said, anything like Django, Flask, uh, RESTful API, ask them how they've used it. Why are we asking this? Because of course we want to then sell this back to the client as well. So you wanna pick out all the key strengths of this developer and you wanna make sure that you can sell them back uh, to the client in terms of the sort of projects they've been involved in. So how do you use Num NumPy for data manipulation? What was the, the, the context of the project there? Um, how do you ensure Python application is secure? So again, they may come out with their own tools, they may come out with their own scenarios, and uh, that will be again something you can sell uh, the client in terms of this particular candidate. So again, debugging and testing is all good practice, but especially within the automation side of things, uh, you will need to get them to tell you how they've used um, Python in maybe a DevOps type environment or a systems administration type environment uh, in terms of automation. So I hope that's helped. That's how you use one of those mind maps. Uh, it's there for you to download, have it in front of you when you speak to uh, candidates. In fact, you may need it in front of you when you actually take details from a client. Um, and that will give you much more uh, credibility, much more confidence in actually speaking uh, about this particular um, area to a candidate uh, or a client. So have this in front of you. And I hope that's helped. Carry on. Carry on with your video training. I hope this has helped, but this will help you in front of candidates. Have this mind map in front of you when you speak to candidates, when you're even taking details from clients, because this will give you much more confidence and credibility to have that conversation when you've got all this sort of knowledge in front of you. So definitely when you're interviewing with candidates, this is a mind map that you should have in front of you, anything similar. Remember, we've got hundreds of these in the library, literally hundreds of mind maps relating to all the roles across IT. So carry on with this training, carry on with looking at the mind maps, and make sure that you get more and more experience in using these for, for your conversations, and I'll see you next time.